Good morning. Thank you for joining me today. We're on a very heavy subject. So let me just give you a quick preamble before we really get into it. We're going to talk about spirits. And I don't know what you know about spirits, but we've learned quite a lot in Jesus' focus over a period of nine years. I want to read you the first letter of John, chapter 4, and the opening three verses. The Bible says this, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist which you've heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. Now, it seems to me there is only one good spirit, the Holy Spirit. And from him the goodness flows. He is God. He is sovereign. He is co-equal with the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Every other spirit that I meet is evil, and there are many evil spirits about. What I find is, and it was certainly true for me, I felt that in the Western world we were cultured enough, educated enough, not to have evil spirits. Evil spirits were for primitive lands, those where they hadn't had the good things we've had. The snag I found is this. There are some very educated spirits about. The strange thing is this too. I find many Christians don't believe in evil spirits, and many people in the world do. And I'm not sure where my Christian brothers and sisters are in their thinking. Let's face it, the world is full of evil spirits. And some people have evil spirits. You say, Richard, how on earth would I know if I had an evil spirit? Very simply you would find a driving force in you that is so strong that when it drives, you cannot resist it, you cannot control it, you are out of control. That is the work of an evil spirit. You say, Richard, I'm a Christian. I didn't question that. I too am a Christian and have been for some years, but I found I had spirits I could not control. Oh, you say, Richard, are you telling me a Christian can have an evil spirit? I'm telling you, I, as a Christian, had evil spirits that had to be dealt with in prayer. Are you talking about exorcism? I think the word's revolting. But I do find that the Lord Jesus dealt with spirits. And I've discovered he still does. And thank God he does, because he set Richard free. I needed that type of ministry, and I searched for well over a year to find it. I knew roughly my need, but I couldn't really put my finger on it. And finally, the Lord my God took me to two friends who were able, in the power of Jesus, to help me to be set free. How I thank God for that. I'm not saying your problem. I'm saying what mine was. Now let's go back to the text and learn a little more. The Bible says, dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God because many false prophets had gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. Do not believe every spirit. You can find lying spirits. You can find immoral, unclean spirits. You can find every spirit of a cult you can name. Going from spirits of the Ouija board to spirits of Satanism, witchcraft, the whole thing. These are all the work of evil spirits. And let me assure you, there is a tremendous power there. Every medium works through spirits. Every psychic works through spirits. And friend, if you're listening to my voice and you're into this sort of thing, I want you to know in the name of Jesus Christ that you're dealing with something that is not of God. Your source is wrong. And we happen to be in a generation that is absolutely using evil spirits in every way possible. They're very powerful. They're very real. Don't laugh at them, but know they're there and know how to deal with them. This is reality. And some Christians seem to laugh it off. Others say that Satan is just a caricature, a cartoon figure. He is not. He's a reality. C.S. Lewis, one of the great writers in England, said a very neat thing. 
He said, Christians go two ways with the devil. Either they go to the point where they just laugh him off as something to forget, or they go to the point where they see him everywhere. And he said, between those two extremes is the position of Scripture. And I think he's right. Yes, there is a devil. We're not afraid of him. We understand him. We know his activity. We know the way he works. And we know in Jesus Christ that we can deal with him. The Holy Spirit is the good spirit. And he dwells within every Christian believer. Any other spirits are evil. And notice how you can test them. You can challenge them. And you've only got to say, do you know Jesus Christ? And if that is an evil spirit, that evil spirit will be gone. Because they know, even if we don't, that they were defeated at the cross of Jesus Christ. Mention his name and they're finished. Use the word of God and they're finished. It's interesting, isn't it? When Jesus was tempted by the devil, he used the word of God three times. And finally the devil had to leave. He cannot resist the power of the word of God. He cannot resist the name of Jesus Christ because it's too powerful. Test the spirit. You say, well, Richard, where do these spirits come from? I think that can be debated. But I know this. There are spirits behind the Eastern religions. There are spirits behind yoga and karate. There are spirits behind TM. And the sad fact is that some of our corporations are sending their executives to TM. And no one seems to say and no one seems to realize that this is Hinduism. When they give you a mantra, a word to meditate on, they're giving you the name of a Hindu God. And you as a Christian have no right to turn the, your back on your Heavenly Father and concentrate on some Hindu God. If you go back to Exodus 20, where the Ten Commandments are given, read verses 3 and 4. Exodus 20, 3 and 4. God says, I am a jealous God. And if you turn your back on me and show you hate me, you will find problems to the third and fourth generation of your children. God says there's a cause and effect. You turn your back on me and you turn to Hindu gods and the next thing is you find problems. And we say we don't believe that. That's all right. That's your free will. But be careful of the results because they're very heavy. We're in a sad generation. Here's the church hardly believing in evil spirits and here's the world just believing in them all over the place. You as a Christian have to defend your situation. You say, Richard, in my corporation, if I refused, I'd lose my job. Then let the Lord your God take care of that. But there are some things you cannot do. If you go to a hypnotist, you're taking your life and putting your hands in the control of someone else. And the Lord your God does not allow that. You're in the hands of Jesus Christ. And you have absolutely no right to put your life in the hands of someone else. Or you say, but I go medically. You have no right to go medically. You belong to Jesus Christ. And he's the one in control. And behind all these things are spirits. You say, Richard, you're seeing spirits everywhere. No, I'm not. But I'm very aware of their activity. Because we've been dealing against them for a long time. This is how you recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Let's face it. The devil wants to do one thing. He wants to destroy us. He wants to destroy our walk in Jesus Christ. He wants to destroy our family. And he does not care how he does it. The second thing is, he's a legalist. And if you give him a right to come into your life, friend, he'll come in. You say, what on earth do you mean? Well, supposing you're going down the road and you see there there's a tarot card reader, there's a palm reader, there's a fortune teller, and you think just for a lark, I'll go in there and find out my future. As you come out of that place, the devil sends his agents to just make one thing happen that you heard in that place. And if one thing happens, I'll guarantee you're caught. You believe everything you heard. And the devil follows through. And the spirits that were active in that person are now active in you because you opened the door. Same sort of thing if you go to an adult bookstore. What are you doing? You're just opening up the door for pornography. You're opening up the door for unclean thoughts. You're opening up the door for unclean imagination, for sexual fantasies. And the next thing is you can't control it. Why? Because spirits have moved in and taken over. 
same sort of thing happens in other areas of our lives. And here we are in a generation that discounts all this when the Word of God says, test the spirits. See if they're of Jesus Christ. See if they know Jesus Christ. And I think there are times when we have to challenge. And we have to know what we're doing. You know, some of us as Christian believers are terribly ignorant. And I don't think the Lord wants that. I believe Jesus says there to be no dumb Christians. That's a little bit of a transliteration. But he says to us, be as wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And I think we should be as wise over evil spirits as we are over anything else. The Bible tells us, the Bible warns us, and we ignore it. John says, this is the spirit of Antichrist which you've heard is coming, even now is already in the world. And there are many different types of Antichrists. Some of us as Christians always focus on the Antichrist, someone who's coming, who's going to lead the world astray. But there are also spirits of Antichrist. Spirits that are totally opposed to Jesus Christ in every form. If ever you meet someone like that, and you're a Christian believer, you're going to meet opposition. You're going to meet the hatred that we talked about earlier in the week. And you're going to wonder why. And that Jesus in you has met that Antichrist spirit, and boy, there's a confrontation there. Now, all these things are real. But let me add something else. You do not need to dwell in fear. You do not need to creep round corners to see if there's a spirit hanging about. You have the power of Jesus Christ within you. Exercise it. You remember what we said yesterday? He lives in us and we live in Him. Therefore, we have the greatest force within us. We're aware of the enemy. We're aware of the way he works. We're aware of his tricks. But friends, we're not afraid of him. The story is given that D.L. Moody, one of the great evangelists of this country, heard a tremendous noise outside his bedroom when he was staying in someone's house. He went outside and there was a big armchair there. And there was Satan sitting in it. And D.L. Moody said, oh, it's only you. Shut the door and went back to bed. I think that's often how we should deal with the devil. Don't give him too much ground. Just acknowledge that you know he's there, but also that you have a power that's greater than his. Test the spirits. See if they know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And if they don't, they'll leave. The good spirit is the Holy Spirit. 